as a curator, I couldn't think of a more interesting thing than to introduce some of the key artists of our moment um, to these new possibilities. They're all exploring this new landscape with us. I'm Daniel Birnbaum. I'm the artistic director of Acute Art. We're on the South Bank. We are launching a very large augmented reality exhibition here along the river. It's almost like an electronic biennial, I have to say. It's a very large exhibition. It's an invisible art show, or rather, it's a very visible art show if you download the Acute Art app. There are trigger points, and this is actually the first one. So each red boy triggers one or two or three artworks. Some of them are hovering above the water, others are behind you. Point the camera to it and things will appear. So let's take a look at the first piece. It's a large ice cube by Ku Zhong Ao. For me, it has special uh, significance because it was the first AR object that we produced. It was shown all over the world. No one traveled, uh, nothing was shipped, so it opened new possibilities. It's a very intelligent ice cube. It looks very simple, it's beautiful, but it breaks light and it reflects light. The environment becomes part of it. The special thing with augmented reality is that you can weave it into reality. It's part of the physical world. You have to be on the South Bank. The real experience is only for people who are willing to walk here. Acute art is a very artist-centered endeavor. It's a kind of laboratory for um, art and technology. What we're trying to do is to realize ideas that artists have and that they maybe couldn't realize in more traditional mediums. In a century, there are often one or two new mediums being introduced. AR and VR represent the first new artistic medium of this century. So of course artists are interested. They use these possibilities in very different ways. Some of them are more interested in you know, philosophical uh, possibilities, um, the, the limits of human perception. Others are maybe more interested in the fact that you can distribute art in, in very different ways. Compared to shipping big sculpture works, I guess this is a glimpse of a totally new way of communicating art, making art available to very large audiences. So we're working very closely with Chao Fei. I would say that Chao Fei is a very curious person. <laughs> so she's always exploring new poetic possibilities um, that new um, artistic mediums provide. When it comes to AR, I mean, this is a first, and I would say I think she's very interested in it being so weightless, that it can go to different places and it can be introduced in, in London, she's still in China. The boy is actually Chao Fei's son. So here you see nothing, but if you look through the app, you see a huge floating figure. It's uh, Ko's companion. He created this figure, um, companion, 20 years ago, and it's actually passed through every possible medium, every, every material. It's been sent out into outer space. So here we are with the AR version of companion. So the next artist is Thomas Saraceno, who um, is exploring uh, many things, uh, but he's obsessed with spiders. Thomas is actually someone who's very critical of our anthropocentric worldview. There are other creatures out there and they're just as significant and some of them are disappearing from our planet. We have created a spider in augmented reality. This is a very exact rendering of a spider called Maratus, but Thomas sees this only as a prototype. It's the beginning of a very complex project that involves raising awareness and actually raising funds. We will never know how the spider sees the world, but here at least we get a glimpse of another life form. Here we have works by Bjarne Melgaard, by Alicia Quade, and by Darren Bader. Bjarne Melgaard is one of the best known Scandinavian artists. Um, he's a painter and a sculptor and many other things. And in all his works, there are a number of characters that recur. There's someone called the light bulb man and there's an octopus. He has created his own cosmology, I would say. Now they have escaped the paintings and uh, here they are along the river. I would say that uh, one of the strengths of uh, AR is the democratizing possibility. Art museums have big audiences, but not everyone lives in a capital city with a major collection. 
And I think that's uh, something that I'm very interested in. Virtual reality and augmented reality yes. have been shown in more traditional contexts, but ultimately these are art forms that don't really need the art fair or the auction house or the museum. AR has a fantastic uh, possibility of breaking out of the traditional uh, institutional frameworks. When you're passing underneath the bridge and find these, uh, um, these pictures, there's a little surprise, a kind of Easter egg. Things come alive. Here we are in front of Tate Modern. We have two pieces here. Hovering above the water is Nina Chanel's imaginary friend. Nina launched a version of this uh, piece as part of a march in um, Washington. The piece is a kind of, a, I think, a spiritual leader. I think it's interesting that political art and especially political interventions have a new tool here with AR. Nothing could be um, um, more promising than augmented reality when it comes to linking images and objects to monuments and other politically relevant places. Olafur Eliasson creates great atmospheres and he's very interested in light, rain and in the air, and the elements basically. In AR he has recreated some of these things. Olafur had a big retrospective here just a few months ago, but maybe even more important is his first show at the um, Tate Modern because it really was his breakthrough internationally. And the show consisted almost only of a sun. It was a big luminous heavenly body sitting there. People were so obsessed with that object. So it felt very nice to welcome the sun back. Here we are again outside Tate Modern and the sun is still shining. Olafur has always been very interested in the relationship between art and technology and between nature and technology. In a way, he always emphasizes the active role of the viewer, that you know, whatever you see, you see from a certain perspective. Everything is an experience by someone. We're also dependent on technological structures. Everything that we experience depends on how we see it. In the lockdown, the presence of technology in our everyday lives has accelerated. I would say that AR is a positive answer to this situation. Augmented reality, the way it has developed uh, over these last years, at least gives us an idea of what maybe will be possible, and to a certain extent is already possible. Art also makes the environment in which it is placed visible in new ways. And my hope, of course, is that people will walk along the river and see these artworks, but actually maybe also experience the city in new ways. My belief is that new technologies actually change our perception of art and it actually changes what art can be. So in a way I would say that Unreal City is the first glimpse of things to come.